Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to, we're going to look at how you can use the VNAV mode to decrease the altitude of the aircraft, uh, to make sure that we can use the approach mode eventually to land on the airport. As you can hear, the HC is already, I would say, talking a lot, right? So it says, okay, hey, you can, I would say, uh, descend to 2,000 feet. But for now, we're going to ignore that. And the reason we're going to do that uh, is... Because we're going to do that at this nice button over here, which is the top of descent. However, there's one important thing is that you need to change the altitude before that point. Because else if you would activate the VNAV mode, it will say, hey, but you're already at that 6000 feet. So I'm going to directly switch you back to altitude mode. So in my case, we're going to switch to 2000 feet. And the reason why we do that is because at this point, RD250, we need to be at 2000. And to show that a little bit better, I'm going to open the uh, map for Rotterdam de Hague Airport. Uh, and then I'm going to go to the approach ILS. And then I will show you the map. Because the map contains a lot of interesting information. It says, this is the localizer information. The localizer information, that's being shown on the navigation display which can be accessed if you press this nav button. There you will see the active one. By default, it's set to auto, which means it's automatically updating that frequency uh, if you bypass a waypoint. But at one point, we need to switch it. And the reason we need to do that is because we want to use the VILS mode as nav source uh, for uh, the last part of our flight. Now, what's more on this information. Well, it says 2000 feet. That's at RD 250, which is over here. That's the 2000 feet, because if we're flying too high, we won't be able to capture the glide scope. Also, the final approach course there, right? 65 degrees, as well as the missed approach. So if we're missing the approach, we need to follow the path to RD 212, then make a turn to 146, RD 213, maximum 210 knots, then to Kako, then in some case you need to, I would say, uh, do a hold here, right? Because it's too busy. And then fly to uh, Dovmu, etc. Now, other interesting information is the airport elevation. Because in this case, the airport is elevated uh, 14 uh, or minus 14 uh, below sea level. So as you can see, we uh, would say we just bypass this point, right? We just bypass the uh, uh of descent mode so i activated the vnav mode by simply pressing vnav and you can see that it directly activates the vnav path now there are a few things which are important one thing is to keep an eye on the speed because since the air or since the vnav mode can work pretty aggressively as you can see uh it could be that the aircraft will go in overspeed mode and that's something which you don't want to happen now the other thing is that you see i would say a nice pink circle over here as well as the, uh, I would say, pink one over here, which shows us, okay, the decreased speed, right? So we're going to go pretty, pretty fast uh, to 2,000 feet because this part is also completely new. And that's due to the fact that we're using the VNAV path to uh, decrease the altitude. So keep an eye on this one because if you're going too fast, it's not good. If you're going too slow, it's also not good, right? So we're going to activate this one, which is good. Now, the other thing which we're going to do is as preparation for the landing is we're going to set the uh, heading mode heading to uh, 65 degrees, right? Because we're going to activate the heading mode, uh, likely, if you want, uh, before uh, switching the mode to the uh, other mode, to the approach mode. So 65 is good. You can see it's a little bit weird because it's say almost to say a few degrees over to the right side right so let's make sure that if we're flying right to this point we're gonna press it again here you can see it says pitch hold right so it switched the mode so we're gonna reduce the speed because it also gives us a warning hey we need to reduce the speed because we're going too fast and what we're now gonna do is we're gonna switch this one to the heading mode 
as soon as we're going to very go very close, right? If we're going to go in a straight line, which is, I would say, now the case. Almost. So, and we're going to switch to heading mode. Then we're going to switch to ILS number 1. And then I'm going to push that uh, 109.1 over here. And you can do that using the buttons over here. 109.1. And then hit the enter key over here. And then once we've done that, we can activate the approach mode. Now, if you activate the approach mode, a few things will happen. Directly, you saw what happened. It activated the localizer mode as well as the uh, glide scope, which means it's good because it captured the glide scope already. Now, if you're screwed and if you're flying too high, then it likely won't be able to capture the glide scope. In that co case, go for a missed approach and then try again. You can monitor the glide scope by looking at these, I would say, blue icons over here, which should be in the middle because if they are in the middle, then you're good. So once we've done that, right, we can see that we're going straight to the airport. So we're going to drop the gears. If you drop the gears, keep in mind that it will also decrease the speed massively, as you can see. And make sure that you're not going too slow, because if you're going too slow, then it's not good. So make sure that you're going the correct speed. And if you're going the correct speed, everything should go okay. You can see that automatically adjusts the uh, the angle of descent, which is good. You can see the poppy lights already here, right? So I'm going to close this one. So that's also fine. The poppy lights are too white, too red, which means, okay, we're on the path. And we can also confirm that by looking at this angle. So we're currently at 800 feet. Keep an eye on the uh, on both the speed as well as the altitude, right? So you can zoom out a little bit. Here you can see localizer and the light scope are still uh, illuminated, which is good. If they're green, it's good. If it's blue, it means it's not activated, like every other functionality in the autopilot. And the aircraft will take us into a nice mode. Uh, eventually, you can uh, deselect the autopilot, right, and do the landing yourself. In some cases, that's required because it's not, I would say, actually descending fast enough. Uh, in some cases, I think it's due to some weird errors in Flight Simulator in some cases. But as you can see, we were uh, made the correction automatically. So we're going good. There's already another aircraft standing here. So we're going to decrease the speed a little bit further. And then it will do the rest automatically, right? So you can disable the autopilot if you want. A little bit of bumpy, uh, a bumpy one. And as you can see, uh, once we hit the ground, it automatically deactivated the autopilot, right? So normally you won't use the autopilot for landing, but it's perfectly capable of doing that, as you can see. So. In this video, we looked at two things, right? The first thing we looked at is how you can use the VNAV mode to change the uh, altitude or to descend. Uh, make sure that you're, I would say, be very careful with changing the frequency of the navigation. And I've seen weird things happening that if you don't switch this magic button over here, that uh, nav source button, that the aircraft automatically starts to turn and almost goes into stall mode or almost if you're too late it will go in stall mode and believe me i already encountered that multiple times so be aware of that that you need to make sure that you're let's say switching to the heading mode first to prevent that it is happening the last part we looked at is okay hey how can we use the uh, approach mode and yeah approach mode you're activating it let's say as soon as you're say almost in line with the uh, runway right so don't make any turns anymore simply as straight as possible into the runway then you can activate that mode and it works perfectly because you saw it captured the glide scope as well as captured the localizer the only thing you need to make sure is that you're never or correctly uh, i would say setting up the uh, frequency as well as you need to make sure that you're 
at that glide scope part which i showed you in navi graph right so make sure that you had, you're at the altitude uh, of the uh, glide scope and that's all i'm going to show you once more if it allows me to do navi graph is would say pretty nice hopefully so I'm going to press Rotterdam, the Hague Airport. I'm going to go to the approach, ILS 6. So, and then I'm referring to this part. So make sure that you're at this specific altitude. At, in this case, at Ardu 250. If you're not at this altitude, so if you're too high, the glide scope won't work. If you're too low, in some cases, it works. But be aware of that, that if you're too high, it simply doesn't work. And you're, I would say, you, you need to declare a missed approach. And I would say, give it a second try. So here ends this video. I hope you liked it because I got some questions about how to use the approach mode. So that question is answered. And as a bonus, we also looked a little bit deeper in the VNAV mode compared to the previous video. Again, I hope you liked it. If you got questions or comments, then feel free to post them in the comment box below. If you want, and if you want to stay up to date about new videos I'm posting, then make sure that you're subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.